Greetings once again from Victoria. My name is Garnet Schulhauser, and I'm a level two QHHT practitioner and the author of four books in the spiritual genre, Dancing on a Stamp, Dancing Forever with Spirit, Dance of Heavenly Bliss, and Dance of Eternal Rapture. All of my books detail my conversations and astral travels with my spirit guide, Albert. For more information about my books, please visit my website, which is garnetschulhauser.com. Now, before we get to the serious topic of today, I'd like to relay to you a funny story I heard recently. A priest, a minister, and a rabbi were chatting together over a coffee. They decided to try to do a test to see which one of them did their job best. So the goal was for each of them to go into the forest, find a bear, and try to convert the bear. So off they went. A few days later, they gathered together again, and the priest went first. He said, I found a bear in the woods, and I read to him from the catechism, and then sprinkled him with holy water. And next week, he's going to have his first communion. The minister was next. Minister said, I found a bear by a stream, and I read to him from God's holy word. He was so mesmerized that he let me baptize him. Then the two of them looked down at the rabbi who was lying on a gurney in a body cast. And the rabbi said, well, in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have started with the circumcision. The topic for today deals with another fascinating but tragic life experienced by one of my clients in a QHHT session. As you know, during a QHHT session, clients are induced into a deep hypnotic trance called the theta level. And in the first part of the trance, they visit one or more past, future or parallel lives chosen for them by their higher self. In this one case, a young woman came to me. She went into a very deep trance. And when she came off of the cloud, she found herself standing in a clearing in the jungle beside a river. She described herself as a young woman with black skin and long black hair down to her shoulders. She was wearing a grass skirt and nothing above the waist. She guessed that she was 14 or 15 years old. But the tranquility of the scene was abruptly shattered when she heard loud noises and voices coming from her village near the edge of the clearing. She quickly ran towards the village and could see that there was a gang of men with white skin who were beating the villagers into submission with their clubs. Before she could do anything, she was knocked down from behind, pinned to the ground, and men put some iron shackles on her ankles. She was then marched through the jungle along with the other villagers until they came to the edge of the great water where she was loaded onto one of the ships that was waiting for them. They were put down into the hold of the ship where they were chained to the floor side by side with no fresh air to provide relief from the stench of human vomit, feces, and urine that they had to live with during the voyage. After what seemed like an eternity to her, they were offloaded from the ship and marched into a square of a village that was surrounded by strange looking huts. The square was filled with white men wearing strange looking clothing and the prisoners were paraded onto a stage at one end of the square. She was told by one of the slave masters who spoke her language that she was in America and she was going to be auctioned off as a slave at the slave market today. When the slave auction was over, she was transported to the plantation of the man who had purchased her as a slave. There was a large white mansion with white pillars in the front and many other outbuildings close by. She was taken to one of the buildings that housed the slaves and fed the first decent meal she'd had since she had been abducted from her village. The next morning, the slave master came to her and said that the owner of the plantation wanted to see her. So he took her to the back door of the big white mansion where she was met with two black house servants who escorted her into a small room with a large bathtub in the center. They forced her to lie down in the tub filled with hot soapy water and they scrubbed her entire body with very stiff brushes. Then they pulled her out of the tub and 
dressed her in a very flimsy nightshirt. At this point, they escorted her up the stairs to a large bedroom that had a large four-poster bed standing in one corner. After a while, a white man entered the room. He was rotund and balding, and he walked towards her with a leering grin. He then removed her nightshirt and stood back to admire her naked body. He pushed her onto the bed, got on top of her, and penetrated her with a strong thrust that brought a scream of pain to her mouth. After several minutes, the man rolled off and went to sleep beside her while she lay there trembling with fear. When she was sure that the man was sound asleep, she tiptoed to the window and looked out and could see that nothing was moving in the darkness of the night. She slipped out of the window, sliding down to the ground using vines. Then she quickly made her way out of the plantation compound and found a path in the forest which she followed. The next morning she was awakened from her fitful sleep by the sounds of voices and baying dogs. She quickly got up and ran as fast as she could down the forest path, but eventually she came to a dead end where the path ended on the precipice of a cliff. She turned around and could see that the men and the dogs were closing in on her. She didn't have much time to think, but she did know that she did not want to go back to the plantation and live her life as a slave. So she jumped off the cliff. She recalled that everything seemed to happen in slow motion as her body plummeted to the rocks below. And then she realized that she was no longer in her body, that she was hovering in midair, watching her body smashed on the rocks beneath the cliff. She was overwhelmed with an amazing sense of relief and peace as she realized that she had freed herself from a life as a slave that she was destined to live. When the client came out of trance, she told me that she now realized why she had always been afraid of heights and why she was fearful of chubby bald men. Well, that was certainly a tragic way to die, but not unusual since many of us have experienced very tragic endings in some of our previous lives. Let's just hope that none of us in this current life have to experience death in that fashion. That's all for now, folks. Remember to enjoy your journey and remember to keep on dancing.